Okay, friends, we've been doing an author study of one of my favorite authors by the name of Nicholas Oldman, an excellent author and illustrator. He does both. That's why there's only one name here, because he writes the stories and he does the art of the story. So, Nicholas Oldman, excellent author because he always includes a moral or a message in his stories. Oops. So, in Up the Creek, the moral or the message was work together and cooperate instead of argue and fight. So, Things went better for our animals, the moose, the bear, and the beaver, when they started to cooperate. The message in The Busy Beaver was, take time to enjoy your life. Don't always be working so hard, and enjoy your friends and your friendships. So that was a really good message in that story. Big Bear Hunt was the first one we read, personally one of my favorites. Uh, two good morals or messages here, be kind and respect nature. And uh, I love the bear hugging all the trees and you know, all the animals too. Excellent stuff from Nicholas Oldman so far. So today's story is the last one we're going to look at in the Nicholas Oldman series. It's called Making the Moose Out of Life. And so that's a bit of a pun or a play on words, because usually what we say is make the most out of life. In this one, it's make the moose out of life. So this story, the main character here is the moose. Uh, and so we've read stories where the main character is a bear, and a story where the main character is a beaver. Now it's the moose's turn. All right, Nicholas Oldham, Making the Moose Out of Life. Let's see if we can figure out what the message in this story is. There once was a moose who lived in the wild, but didn't act wild at all. Huh. When it rained, his friends would go puddle jumping. Not this moose, too wet. When the wind blew, his friends would go kite flying. Not this moose, too windy. When it snows, his friends would go skiing. Not this moose, too cold. not having much fun. But every now and then, the moose got the feeling he was missing out on something. What could it be? Oh, friends are cliff jumping, and he's not doing it. Not actually an advisable thing to do. The moose tried meditating, searching the internet, looking into a crystal ball, praying to the moose above, and scanning the night sky. But the moose didn't find a thing. Funny illustration there uh, by Nicholas Oldman. He's got the alien in the sky there. I like that. That's funny. One sunny day, the moose was struck with a thought. He needed to take life by the antlers if he was going to find that something missing. In the same instant, he noticed the sailboat at the water's edge. It sailed gently flapping in the breeze. The moose was inspired. Again, a funny illustration where the beaver is hitting uh, the moose in the head with his golf ball. Oops. With his friends looking on, the moose set sail. But what started as a gentle breeze turned into a strong wind. Uh -oh. Here's our uh-oh moment. And soon became a raging storm. The moose battled the storm till he could fight no more. In the morning, the moose woke up, scared and alone on a deserted island. Normally, this moose would have curled into a ball and cried, but that day he took a deep breath and got to work. Ah. Stranded on a desert island. The moose located a source of fresh water, vital. Gathered wood and made a signal fire, built a shelter, climbed for coconuts, learned to spear fish, and met a tortoise named Tuesday. Go to Robin, Robinson Crusoe play on words there, or play on uh, plot there. If you, uh, if your parents are out there, they know who Robinson Crusoe is. <clears throat> Over the following days and weeks, the moose faced many challenges and thought of home often. But with Tuesday by his side, he made the most of island life. When it was hot, they went swimming. When the waves were big, they surfed. When it was cold, they roasted coconuts by the fire. Life was pretty good. Then, just as the moose was about to pour Tuesday another coconut smoothie one evening, a ship appeared on the horizon. Quickly, they threw more wood on the fire to get the crew's attention. When the ship came to the moose's rescue, the two friends said their goodbyes, promised to write, and made plans to get together for the holidays. Ah, a little bit sad. 
who was saying goodbye to his friend Tuesday. The moose had been rescued on day three of a two-week Caribbean cruise. At first he was nervous about being back at sea, but when the moose finally left his cabin, it didn't take him long to embrace the cruise lifestyle. He enjoyed all-day buffets, shuffleboard on the Lido deck, and all-night card games. There he is, over here, enjoying his cruise. When the moose finally arrived home, his friends could hardly believe their eyes. The beaver and the bear thought they had lost their friend forever. They gave him a big welcome home hug, and when the once mild-mannered moose said, let's go cliff jumping, his friends were overjoyed. And now here's a letter the moose right writing to his friend Tuesday. Dear Tuesday, I feel like a new moose. I am always doing something fun and exciting. Can't wait for the holidays. I miss you. Have you ever been to Africa? Love, moose. Excellent. So I hope you were able to get the idea of what the moral or message in this story uh, is from Nicholas Olden, and that's to live your life and take chances. Uh, moose was kind of a mild-mannered guy. He didn't do anything. Uh, he was kind of a boring moose. Uh, and then when he went on his little adventure, he realized there's more to life. Uh, and then when he came back, Bear and Beaver were happy to see him, and he realized he had everything right in front of him that he wanted. Uh, friend, good friends, and it was time for him to experience more in life and do more. Uh, and so that's why he wrote that letter to Tuesday. I feel like a new moose, because he's taking more chances now and living his life after that experience or that adventure of being deserted on a desert island. Good message. Live your life to the fullest. Good stuff from Nicholas Olden. So we're going to stop our Nicholas Olden study uh, now, and we're going to go on to a new author. I think it's going to be Mo Williams uh, with the pigeon stories, but I'll see how that goes. All right, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, do the assignment now, please, and thank you, and we'll move on to a new author next.